This after-school presentation was written and recorded by Gawinda. In 2016, 24-year-old Nicholas Perry wanted to be big online. He started uploading videos to his YouTube channel in which he pursued his passion, playing the violin, and extolled the virtues of veganism. He went largely unnoticed. A year later, he abandoned veganism, citing health concerns. Now free to eat whatever he wanted, he began uploading mukbang videos of himself consuming various dishes while talking to the camera, as if having dinner with a friend. These new videos quickly found a sizable audience, but as the audience grew, so did their demands. The comment sections of the videos soon became filled with people challenging Perry to eat as much as he physically could. Eager to please, he began to set himself torturous eating challenges, each bigger than the last. His audience applauded, but always demanded more. Soon, he was filming himself eating entire menus of fast food restaurants in one sitting. In some respects, all his eating paid off. Nikocado Avocado, as Perry is now better known, has amassed over 6 million subscribers across 6 channels on YouTube. By satisfying the escalating demands of his audience, he got his wish of blowing up and being big online. But the cost was that he blew up and became big in ways he hadn't anticipated. Nikocado, moulded by his audience's desires into a cartoonish extreme, is now a wholly different character from Nicholas Perry, the vegan violinist who first started making videos. Where Perry was mild-mannered and health-conscious, Nikocado is loud, abrasive, and spectacularly grotesque. Where Perry was a picky eater, Nikocado devoured everything he could, including, finally, Perry himself. The rampant appetite for attention caused a person to be subsumed by the persona. We often talk of captive audiences, regarding the performer as hypnotising the viewers. But just as often, it's the viewers hypnotising the performer. This disease, of which Perry is but one victim of many, is known as audience capture, and it is essential to understanding influences in particular and the online ecosystem in general. Audience capture is an irresistible force in the world of influencing, because it's not just a conscious process but also an unconscious one. While it may ostensibly appear to be a simple case of influencers making a business decision to create more of the content they believe audiences want, and then being incentivized by engagement numbers to remain in this niche forever, it's actually deeper than that. It involves the gradual and unwitting replacement of a person's identity with one custom made for the audience. To understand how, we must consider how people come to define themselves. A person's identity is being constantly refined, so it needs constant feedback. That feedback typically comes from other people, not so much by what they say they see as by what we think they see. We develop our personalities by imagining ourselves through others' eyes, using their borrowed gazes like mirrors to dress ourselves. Just as lacking a mirror to dress ourselves leaves us dishevelled, so lacking other people's eyes to refine our personalities leaves us uncouth. This is why those raised in isolation become feral humans, adopting the character of beasts. Put simply, in order to be someone, we need someone to be someone for. Our personalities develop as a role we perform for other people, fulfilling the expectations we think they have of us. The American sociologist Charles Cooley dubbed this phenomenon the looking glass self. Evidence for it is diverse, and includes the everyday experience of seeing ourselves through imagined eyes in social situations, otherwise known as the spotlight effect. The tendency for people to alter their behaviour when in the presence of pictures of eyes, otherwise known as the watching eye effect, and the tendency for people in virtual spaces to adopt the traits of their avatars in an attempt to fulfil expectations, otherwise known as the Proteus effect. When we lived in small, tight-knit communities, the looking glass self helped us to become the people our loved ones wanted us to be. The problem is, we no longer live solely among those we know well. We can only gauge who they are by what some of them post online. And what people post online is not indicative of who they really are. As such, the people we're increasingly becoming someone for are an abstract illusion. When influencers are analysing audience feedback, they often find that their more outlandish behaviour receives the most attention and approval which leads them to recalibrate their personalities according to far more extreme social cues than those they'd receive in real life. In doing this, they exaggerate the more idiosyncratic facets of their personalities, becoming crude caricatures of themselves. The caricature quickly becomes the influence distinct brand, 
and all subsequent attempts by the influencer to remain on brand and fulfill audience expectations require them to act like the caricature. As the caricature becomes more familiar than the person, both to the audience and to the influencer, it comes to be regarded by both as the only honest expression of the influencer, so that any deviation from it soon looks and feels inauthentic. At that point, the persona has eclipsed the person, and the audience has captured the influencer. The old Greek legends tell of Narcissus, a youth so handsome he became besotted by his own reflection. Unable to look away from his image in the surface of the waters, he fell still forever, and was transformed by the gods into a flower. Similarly, as influencers glimpse their idealised online personas reflected back at them on screens, they too are in danger of becoming eternally besotted by how they appear, and in so doing, forgetting who they were, or could be. This is the ultimate trapdoor in the Hall of Fame, to become a prisoner of one's own persona. The desire for recognition in an increasingly atomised world lures us to be who strangers wish us to be, and with personal developments so arduous and lonely, there is ease and comfort in crowdsourcing your identity. But amid such temptations, it's worth remembering that when you become who your audience expects at the expense of who you are, the affection you receive is not intended for you but for the character you're playing, a character you'll eventually tire of. And so, be warned, being someone often means being fake, and if you chase the approval of others, you may, in the end, lose the approval of yourself. Thanks for tuning into this episode of After School. If you found this subject interesting and want more, consider checking out my other writings at gawinda.substack.com. The link is in the description.